Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO. And I'm Monday Most, by the way, and we're creating content every damn day. Hey, man, what's going down, man? We got a special guest in here, man, from Memphis, man. Memphis in the building, man. 901 Trigger Trey. What's going on, baby? Big trigger in this bitch, man. What's going on, y'all? Man? How you doing? Y'all? Man, it's going down, man. Hey, man, it's just good to good to have you on the uh, Boss Talk One Hundred One uh, platform. It's it's a it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. man. It's a blessing to be here, man. So, uh, just um, we like to uh, just kind of talk about you a little bit, you know, uh, with 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 everything that you connected to, man. Um, I know with with being from Memphis, the, the elephant in the room is Dolph. You know what I mean? The young Dolph passing. Mm-hmm. Um, just, uh, but did you ever did you know him or had you ever ran into him? Anything like that? No, nah, I never got a chance to meet him, but I always been a fan of him since he came out. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, he played a big influence in a lot of my music. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. He, I've been, you know, Dolph came out around the time when I was in like ninth or tenth grade. You know what I'm saying? So. Coming up, you know what I'm saying? I always been listening to Dolph all the way up to his artists that come out, you know what I'm saying? I literally watched Dolph make his whole his whole whatever you wanna call it, his whole foundation from day one. Just from being a fan of him, you know what I'm saying? And being a fan of his music. So seeing everything that he do, shit, I me honestly, I always been a fan. You know what I'm saying? Big shout out to Paper Rap, you know what I'm saying? Long live Dolph. Wow. Man, hey, what, what did you learn from Dolph as as you watching him? When you was younger, man, from watching him, you know what I'm saying, he just showed me how, how to, you know, basically how to move a team, you know what I'm saying, generational wealth, you know what I'm saying, things that, you know, taking care of your your folks when you ain't gonna be here, you know what I'm saying, like, basically, he so, he showed so much to the game, he showed so much to outside of the game, you know, as far as, far as the rap game, you know what I'm saying, he showed so much as far as you know, showing love to your city. You know what I'm saying? Don't show he put artists in the game. He did so much. So it's like when it come to me, he just taught me what I want to do in the rap game, what I want to do for my team. You know what I'm saying? So So you feel like if you get to that level, you feel like you're gonna come back to your hood just by seeing it? Yeah. I mean I'll come back, but I know that it's just that, you know, based off of what he done been through, I just know to be careful on what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? You know, Basically, that's just the lesson I learned out of it. You know, be careful around what you're doing, you know, because we already know how my city is. We already know how Memphis go, you know. Not saying that it's all bad, but we all know what comes with success. Everybody yeah. don't want to see you have success. Even folks in your own city who grew you can have somebody that grew up with you all your life that that's don't want to see you successful. That's where the, hate, the most hate come from. It, exactly. I said I said earlier today, I was like, the most hate, I mean, hate come from people that you actually are friends with. Like you can't be, you can't, hate can't come from nobody else that don't even know. Straight up, so it's like everybody is it's mostly come from your inner circle. It, it, and it hurts, but and it and it's really kind of and it hurt because you know what I'm saying a person that don't even know you, never met you a day in their life, but they'll open up to you just because yeah. they know, just because they want to know, they see that realness in you. Versus when you got a dude from your city or a lot of folks from your city that know you and they see what you've been through, but they still want to see you down there with them. Let, let me ask you this, man. Because um, I, I, being that you connected with Raven, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and all the stuff. Like I say, I always go back into it. That internet is a beast. You can't beat Something the internet crazy. either. But what's the? What, I mean, how has that affected you? You know, mentally, far as with with everything that that's being said about you and and the people that you hang around. Positive, po- on a, from a positive side, it made me think. You know, what I'm saying, hey, they watching me. You know, what I'm saying, you know, it. From the negative side, yeah, I mean, you know, it fucked me up a little bit, you know, to hear the rumors and all that, but maybe with me, because I've been through, you know, my life don't persist of social media. My life doesn't persist of what people saying on the internet. You just talking. You from over there. You ain't from over here. So a lot of stuff y'all running y'all mouth about that's going on over here, you just speculating from another city. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the the people that, that got common sense and that know what's going on, yeah, they even understand the same way. Hey, I can't come in your city talking about how this person died and who was on this blog and who was there. I wasn't there. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, you got a lot of crazy people on social media. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, to me, to be honest with you, you know, they didn't make me they didn't make me cry about nothing. They didn't make me get in my feelings about no rumors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that this come with it. Yeah. I'm supposed to feed off of it, though. 
Like yeah, that's where most of your most of your views will come from. Your haters, cause they gonna see what you're doing at all times. So they watching every single second. And that's all it made me do. Just just step out more, go harder more for myself, <clears throat> go harder for my team. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I never expected none of this to happen. But yeah. at the same time, once I'm in it, now that I'm in it, I'm in it. Yeah, yeah. No, you know? I, I get it, man. Like, so how is the how's the music scene? Because Memphis got. I mean, when you look at all the stuff that. The poo shysters and the man, y'all mm-hmm. niggas got some bad, some Free bad niggas down there, man. Uh, even you know, and and like I said, uh, CMG. I mean, have you ever worked with any of those artists? Never. Have you I ever did met work. any of those artists? Been been on pictures with any of those artists? Never. Do you want to be on pitch with them? I mean, would you work with? Yeah, I would work. Yes, I would work with a lot. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when it comes to that whole beef between the situation with all them, for, see the thing is, and that's another reason I hate the rumors that come out about me because it was kind of stereotypical. Oh, so I'm from Memphis. That means automatically I want to be signed to CMG or signed to Paper Rap. That don't even make sense. Um, how y'all know I don't want to be independent? How y'all know I don't want my own team to come up off of ourselves? And if I ever do was to sign a label. Or a team saying, y'all better make damn sure that y'all make sure I can be able to do for me and mine. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you know, not saying that I wouldn't sign to nobody, but y'all got to have y'all paper right. Yeah. And yeah. when it comes to, you know what I'm saying, you know, like you said, you know, what mm-hmm. I did with any of them artists to do features with them, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, it's business. Shit, yeah, it's business. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, just like that side got shit going on, that other side do too. I do music with them. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I don't have no side that I chose with none of that because I don't got nothing to do with it. This they business. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I've been a fan of all artists from Memphis. I love I love I love the new scene. Cause there's a lot of talent in my city. Who and, a lot, and a lot of us getting slept on. Yeah. Who the hottest uh you uh as far as outside of yourself? I know you hot. But <laughs> 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 but who is who do you who do you kind of see that's that's moving and making waves in the Memphis area? Man, it's it's a lot of them. You know what I'm saying? You got Pooh Shiesty. You got... You well, know he gone. I'm, yeah, I mean, he gone, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just speaking from what I've seen in the past yeah. couple of years. You know what I'm saying? You got Big Boogie coming out. You got... Um, you got Lil Migo with his part of CMG. You got... Uh, you know what I'm saying? Casino Jizzle. You know what I'm saying? You got uh, hmm. Big 30. You know what I'm saying? You got... um Even on paper outside, Glock. You got, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Moochie Great. You know what I'm saying? You got... People from different sides of everything that's moving in Memphis. So, you know, I can't really say who's the hottest, but I, just, I can just say who popping right now, who getting it in, and it's, it's beautiful. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I, I love to see what my – because a lot of them folks, they don't understand, you know, being in Memphis, it ain't easy to come up at all. It ain't – you know what I'm saying? In my city, truth be told, we don't have a lot of opportunities that other motherfuckers got. Open mics and all that extra shit to get back in it. We just now getting it. We ain't had always had that. So to see them, so to see them make something out of nothing, you know what I'm saying? It's a it's a beautiful thing, you know. To see that they getting a, that we getting the recognition as a whole, our city. I love it. Yeah, but, you know. I'm yeah. gonna show you the, the one the one of the most scariest thing I saw when I went to Memphis is I saw two niggas hanging out the window with AR-15s and the police just watched them ride by. Hey. It's a lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> oh, you watched him right What street watch. was you on, nigga? You was in, bro. you was in Tuna, cause you wasn't over there in Memphis. Nah, he was like, me. Nah, I was, I was, he don't even know I was, bro. And, I, and the officers was black. Hey, oh, was, everybody a black. Of, a lot of them. Yeah. Hey, you got some white ones out there too. Yeah, man. some white ones. But I'm just saying, it's like you, you, you don't, you're not gonna actually just. Hey, I'm finna go to Memphis and see this shit. Like, you're not finna see this shit nowhere else. Like, mm, that. Yeah. Man, that shit shocked the hell out of me. Like, damn, this shit really like, I gotta go. Wow. I know how I am. I, I, I got an attitude problem. So, if I see shit like that and I know they can't control it, I don't need to be there. Yeah. And, so I like, and I truth be to told, pick. truth be told, you know, even though, you know, the light is on Memphis right now, you know, let's keep it real. When we speak on all 50 states and it come to all, all blocks and all sections and all projects, it's all the same rules, just a different accent. Hey, we understand it, but I'm saying <laughs> I'm from the street, so I know. I send yeah. the police to watch these people ride by. <laughs> right. You can't see nowhere else. You're not seeing nowhere else, so you can stop that. I'm saying it's somewhere sit. outside. You're not going to sit nowhere else. Yeah, yeah. I'm from Louisiana. Yeah. So I, you're not seeing it. Oh, uh, y'all, wow. You're not seeing it. Y'all, wow. That's what I mean. You're not seeing it, though. <laughs> I saw that shit. I'm like, nah, this is just another level. Oh, this shit. It's another level. So, hey, yeah, it's another level. Yeah, I'm <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, when you, when you, uh, so what got you into music, man? I, w- I want to get on the music a little bit here. Man, so, I've been, I've been, 
Look, I done had the talent for music since, you know, since I was a little one. You know what I'm saying? My mama, my, my mama was so heavy on R&B, you know what I'm saying? My pops was a heavy hip-hop fan, you know what I'm saying? My cousins, you know, I got a cousin that sing, you know what I'm saying? I got an uncle that, you know what I'm saying, he out there doing this thing, you know what I'm saying? I had a, um, my, his daddy used to do things for Cool in the Gang back in the day. So my family been around music all my life. I guess it's just with me. It became a little bit too more, much of a serious thing I wanted to do. I always wanted to do music all my life. You know what I'm saying? I done been writing since I was, what, 10, 11, 12. You know what I'm saying? So it's just that that's just the influence took on me. Yeah. And it made me go further than what I thought I'd go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, Dude, How long have you been rapping? Man, I, be, I say that, I been honestly, I've been rapping for years, but at the same time, my recognition is just now coming. You know what I'm saying? So When thought. did you start taking it serious, though? Man, I started taking it serious. I want to say somewhere when I got when I got to when I uh, went out there to Atlanta to kind of you know what I'm saying networking, you know what I'm saying get to meet some certain people. That's when I really started realizing, okay, I went to Atlanta with nothing. You know what I'm saying? I ain't have a dime in my pocket, but I made some out of it. You know what I'm saying? And when I got to network and meet certain people, I never thought I'd meet. That made me like, yeah, I can keep this shit going. And then when I started to put my music around them folks, and they fucked with it, I'm like, yeah. I could do this. I yeah. could really, really do this. Ratchet but classy. What is that? What, what made? What inspired that? Um, looking at okay, I can't. I don't want to speak for all women when I say this, but most. <laughs> most. You can say it most. When I when I look at women, you know, all of them have on the song. I said bougie, ratchet, figure, but classy. Those all are certain things that I feel like every woman has. But I, as far as they personality wise, but at the same time, no one of them stick out more than the other ones. You dig know what I'm saying? I feel like every woman have a class, classy side. I feel like every woman got a ratchet side. I got. I feel like every woman can be bougie, and I feel like every woman can be freaky if they if if you treat them right or do them right, or whatever the case may be. So, you know, they say that those things don't mix and don't blend, but. Not from what I've been seeing in this world with the women I've been seeing in this generation. I done seen females who can go to the club, turn up, do whatever they do, but can turn around and put their put their uh their, their work suit on and then go and take their head to work and handle their business. So, you know what I'm saying? I I admired it. Most female most dudes, I ain't gonna say most dudes, but some dudes they want a classy chick. Some dudes want a ratchet chick. I like them both. I like it blended in. I like do, a female that can stand in the streets and it can be, you know, hey. Do you do do you freestyle or do you write or do you punch? I love to write. Let me ask you something, man. Um, where do you see yourself in, 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 in the next year or so? I'm saying year because, you know, with everything now wrapped around with what you guys are yeah. facing mm -hmm. um, and, and with what you guys have dealt with. There is a lot of eyes on on you, and 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 how can you you can leverage this? I ain't gonna mm -hmm. say how can you you can leverage. I just it. Say I can what do you plan to, to do mm -hmm. to make sure that you capitalize on what's going on? Well, for one, you turn a negative into a positive, and then you know what I'm saying when it come to you know making them focus on me, shit. You seeing what you got right now? I'm an artist. I make music. This is what I do. I be on social media. I, I turn. Y'all want to see nine hundred one trigger tray? You getting him right in your face. Tune the fuck in. And that's all I can do is make sure. And now I'm finna turn this negative to a positive. We gonna keep on pushing the music. I got my team. They pushing music. So to answer your question, as far as where you think I'll be a year from there, bossed up like I said I was gonna be when I first prophesized this shit years ago, sitting in a goddamn raggedy ass car with my brother. Wow. So I, I like that. I like the way that you. How much, hold on. How much content have you put out since about that? To be honest with you, one or two songs. See, that's where you messed up at. You supposed to. You already know that. that, that I know. I understand how you feel about mm -hmm. it, but that process when it came towards you, you should have pushed it out right in there. Cause they was already a, looking at you, so you mm -hmm. kept them looking at you. Yeah, they. Um, I think it was the it was the controversy versus a lot of personal. It, but it don't yeah. matter. Once all that's said and done, you still gonna be moving. Mm -hmm. So it don't matter. It's like soon as soon as soon as all that die down, you still gonna be pushing, pushing, pushing. They gonna be singing to the whole thing. So mm -hmm. they're not gonna stop looking at you then. Right. Well, you you, you and then, hold on, and then you can change the narrative of that. 
Right situation that, that you was in. That's why I crazy. said. That's why I said. I'm a. You know, what I'm saying. You know, true. That's why I said. Changing a negative into a positive. You know, what I'm saying. That's why I'm trying to. That's why even right now with all this shit, I, I'm doing an interview with y'all. I'm getting. I'm talking. You know, what yeah. I'm saying. I'm even my songs. You know, they put ratchet with classy. They throw it back. I'm throw pushing. It back. It, you that's know, what I'm saying. I just dropped. A, mm-hmm. I just dropped a song called "Come Outside." You know, what I'm saying in response to the bloggers. You know, what I'm saying. So I'm really. I'm. I'm moving the best way I can. You know, what I'm saying. I ain't saying that. You know, it's just a lot, but at the same time, I'm going. No, let's stop. Throw it back. Huh? How, what what made you uh I know what it throw it back mean. Yeah, we know what it means. Yeah, we know what throw I mean, it back mean. You, you was at the club that when you thought about that one. Uh. Man, I was sitting back, man. It was an inside joke that turned into a hit. <laughs> hey, that's how it do. That's how it I'ma tell time. you what it was, man. Me and my brother Baby Joe, shout out Baby Joe, you know what I'm saying? We had this thing where we say we're gonna knock a female bunnet off if we hit him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like we we talk about we gonna knock a female bunnet off if we gonna knock him off. So you know, one day I was just man, I was sitting in the crib just listening to this beat and it just gravitated to me so hard I just was playing on the beat and I just threw it back, threw it back, threw it back. And I just threw that threw that little one little joke in there and everybody went stupid off of it and boom, throw it back. <laughs> wow. Um now um let me ask you something. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Dead top three. Top three? Dead or alive. Pop. Okay. Starlito. Starlito, okay. Number three. Number three. A three um, get them every time. Mm. I'm gonna put Wayne in there. You gonna put Wayne in there? I put Wayne in there. Wow, that's dope, man. But you say Pac, uh, Starlito, 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 and uh, um, and uh, Lil Wayne. And it's only because you can, only got three. <laughs> that's all you can get. This <laughs> top three. three artists. This is what we do over here. Most dead. So, um. Man, hey, one one thing I want to say, man, is make sure you keep putting God first. If you ain't, you need to start. Man, I put God, it, trust me, real talk, if I wasn't putting God first, me and you wouldn't be sitting here talking. Really? Real it's, talk. That's dope. And I say that because of the fact that the metal folks got to understand, you know, outside of the rumors and the BS that they putting on these blogs, now no one sugar trade ain't getting no, ain't getting no easy come up. Now no one sugar trade ain't getting no, everything is all work. This shit ain't no, I ain't making no easy goddamn cloud off this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't making no easy money off this. I got to get out here and move just like every other artist. You know what I'm saying? Most so, definitely. And now that y'all got y'all eye on me, y'all seeing what I'm doing. Man, <laughs> man, a 901 trick or trade, man. We hey, where did 901 come from? Now, let me break it down for you. 901, that's Memphis. That's my city. That's where I'm from. Trick or trade. I can rap. I speak just like a chopper. I speak. So that trick or trade. Trey, that's my name. That's what my team, that's, that's, that's the nickname, that's the name when you go back to Memphis. You know what I'm saying? So, now I don't want you to Trey. Man, y'all heard it. There, there y'all have it. Uh, check it, man. Hey, man, thank you. We love you. I appreciate y'all. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101.